Hello, I'm Joe and welcome to the subfeed. If you've followed this channel for a long time, or at least since the Everyone is Here video we put out about a month or two ago, then you know that I am a big fan and a big part of the community surrounding the semi-famous YouTube channel known as Blimey Cow. Today we are looking at a bunch of short films produced for a film contest ran by the cows themselves for their Patreon community. Before we get into that though, there is a bit of drama that's happened as a result of that video that I would like to mention. I know I have a no drama rule, so I'm just gonna really quick get it out of the way. In that Everyone Is Here video, I used a bit of content created by Adler Davidson, and as a result, he is suing the Schmook Network. Now, obviously we're not going to just let the lawsuit stand, so my lawyer has given me this official statement, which I will now read. <clears throat> I, Joe Rep, was counseled by my very smart and informed lawyer, Eric Hader, uh, to just settle out of court and re-upload the video without Adler's content. However, I, Joe Rep, am a very stubborn and not very smart person. So myself and Adler have decided to settle out of court, and instead of just re-uploading the video, we're settling it the way all YouTube drama is now settled in the boxing ring. <laughs> There were 14 teen, what am I doing with my hands? There were 14 films produced for the Blimey Cow Patreon Cow Community Film Contest that we're talking about today. I am going to go through the playlist and talk about each and every one of the films, except for the ones I'm going to skip over. Then we're going to talk about which films won awards and which films I would have liked to have won awards if the world were ideal. All of these films were made in just a weekend. It was a film contest and they had a deadline. Chances are none of these films are going to get absolutely everything right. These films are mysteries and what I'm looking for is an interesting concept for the mystery and for the characters to go through some kind of arc through the course of the very short time allotted. If there aren't good characters or good concepts, I'm not going to really love it as one of my picks for best film. Everything else, good cinematography, good costumes, good set design, good editing, a, even really an emotional reaction is kind of icing on the cake. For one thing, emotional reactions are really impossible to compare when some of these are dramas and some of these are comedies. Now just because I'm saying these traits are icing on the cake doesn't mean that good icing should not go unappreciated. Now if icing is the best thing on a cake, that's fine. It's just that that cake won't win best film award. All that in mind, let's begin. Who killed Tom? By Scott. This is the only film in the bunch that was animated, so it wins best animation by default. The voice acting by Scott is top notch. He makes every part of this funny. From the beginnings of the fairly standard mystery story to the reveal that it was not any of the usual suspects who killed Tom, but rather, Tom was killed by Scott. A twist which is cleverly set up at the very first shot of the film, which is Scott opening his animation software. This is great for what it is, but what it is is just a guy asking a bunch of people, hey, did you commit this crime? And them saying, no, nah, it wasn't me. And then a fourth wall joke, which is nothing groundbreaking, but yeah, I don't know, it was still funny. Tom! Sleepless. This is a classic film noir mystery film. No, hold on, scratch that. This takes the film noir aesthetic and then makes it its own. And then it takes that film noir aesthetic that it reinvented and made its own and squeezes every last black and white but mostly black drop out of it so that the film is just oozing noir essence. The point is, is that if you want a film that knows how to do stylization right, you've come to the right place. This film was shot wonderfully, it's edited wonderfully, it has some good costumes, it has wonderful voiceover that's so good it made my ears melt off of my skull and it felt amazing. Now that I've complimented this film in terms that are unnecessarily graphic, let me explain why I don't like it. 
We learn nothing about the mystery itself other than the fact that the murderer took off his shoes and then put them back on. And then the guy solving the mystery puts no effort into solving this mystery at all. And speaking of which, this guy solving the mystery does kind of go through a story arc, but his arc is just kind of, man, I need to sleep, too bad I gotta solve this mystery first, oh no, and the mystery can deal with itself, I'm gonna go to bed. What, what was stopping him from going to sleep in the beginning if he's perfectly able to just forget about the mystery and then go to sleep? This film is exactly what I was describing at the top of the video about having really, really good icing, but no meat. If you don't eat your meat, you can't have any food. I'm mixing food metaphors, but you get my point. Another space in time. The mystery being solved in another space in time is the disappearance of a cat. This disappearance is told to us by a guy called the host who stands in front of a camera and kind of talks about how much he loves the paranormal to his intern who runs the camera for him. I wish I had an intern. I just have the hipster nerd and he stands over there and doesn't do anything. This film is especially short and that's its major flaw. I love the characters. I love everything that happens. I love that everything is blue for some reason. I love that the twist, even though it's absurdist, is cleverly set up in what you think is a one-off joke earlier in the film. Also, whiteboards. I have one too. It's relatable to me. That said, it's just too short. I mean, it's not a bad thing if the worst thing about your film is that I wanted more of it. But I wanted more of it! Bet you she drove like a dream. I've never driven a dream. Puppet MD. This one gets a lot of originality points for it being about puppets. It gets even more of those originality points when you realize that them being puppets is critical to the actual punchline of the story. That said, this film is like four minutes of jokes and one of them is funny and it's the one at the very, very end. And for those four minutes, you're not really given characters that you can kind of get a good feel for and identify with. The only character traits we learn about the two characters is that one can't hear and the other is sick. To give you some perspective, the previous film, which I praised for having great characters, is like half the length of this one. So they had the time. The one really good joke this film has is really good. Does that save the rest of it? I'll leave that up to you. This is a really funny short. Its characters aren't great. I don't know a single thing about them, but it's funny. I laughed many times when I was watching this from beginning until right before the end. It's kind of the inverse of the last film, actually. Like, the build-up is all really funny, but then the kind of climax, the punchline of the whole thing, uh, takes just a bit too long, and you, like, expect there to be another twist that, like, makes it funny, but it never hits. The secret agent just subscribes to Blimey Cow, which is a great life decision not really a good ending for your film. Drop the box and look out the window. Isn't the sky pretty? I mean, like, the sky is just so pretty. People never look at the sky anymore. My husband is missing. When I first watched through these, this was actually the first film I watched, and boy, is this a crazy place to start. This film is a roller coaster, and I honestly don't know how to describe it, so just go watch it yourself. The beauty of this film and how it establishes a tone and a certain feeling of unease that builds within you as it goes, the editing and the pacing are glorious. The entirety of the actual story takes place before anything we see or hear. The, the one character we see already knows what happens. She's just kind of waiting for the audience to catch up. I love this film. There's something inside me that makes me want to say it doesn't deserve best film, but I can't really quantify what that is. It's third or second best though. Like, it's really good. Hurricane Survival, the mystery unveiled. I'm not gonna go in depth with this one at all because even though I love it, I don't think it counts as a film. There is no story taking place. There are characters and they're acted wonderfully, but nothing happens. They just kind of talk about things happening. It's basically a 
PSA, or a parody of PSAs, I guess. It's basically a an episode of Messy Mondays. It's not any more of a film than this episode of the subfeed is a film. And to be fair, it's a much better video than this episode of the subfeed is, probably. You can tell me that in the comments if you disagree. Click the like button, everybody. Click the like button on, on the video I'm talking about, too. Actually, go check that out. It's good. So I thought you said Hurricane was coming, like, uh, five hours ago? It'll come. Yep, um, still waiting. Cody! This is one of the few films that elicited actual emotional response out of just about everybody who watched it. It's a very personal story about, like, death and grieving and stuff. It's very sweet, very cute, and very sad. Made even more so once you realize that the people who made it actually owned a dog named Cody. The way the story is written is different because it's clearly based on a real dog that this family lost. I have a hard time criticizing this one. Very similar to the last one actually, but I can't say it's not a film, just that it's a different kind of film than anything else on this list. The final results should not have been any different from what it actually was. Uh, so any problems I have with it don't matter, because it's a personal story and I'm not the person it's personal to. This film was beautifully made and it clearly took a lot of work. I mean, this dog is like walking next to a road, like without a person next to it. And like, how do you film that? How do you keep the dog from going out into traffic? That must have been a nightmare. And I never want to do that. <laughs> Java, what was your favorite movie? What was your favorite film? Did you like the doggy film? Did you like it? Did you watch the doggy film? No, you sat over here. You sat over here and took a nap. The Mysterious Shirt. This film starts out with a guy setting up to record some kind of vlog, which is just a little cringy. Like it's directly appealing to kind of YouTuber video tropes and I don't know, I dislike it. Just I don't know, it bugs me cause like it reminds me of me when I'm setting up to record and there's a reason I edit that out. <sighs> All right, let's see if that was a good take. But that's the biggest complaint I have about it. Other than that, it's flawless. It's one of my picks for best film, without any hesitation. This vlogger discovers that his shirt magically changes whenever he changes from one camera angle to the other. But his character isn't just going back and forth and reacting to the changes. He's like, like you can see the gears turning in his head and he's like experimenting with it and trying to mess with it and see what causes what results exactly but he doesn't want to mess with the shirt itself because he knows that the shirt itself is what's causing it not the camera setup and the fact that he has this desire to experiment with it but not actually mess with it enough that it stops happening is an interesting character trait that leads to like actual internal conflict and he has to evolve as a character by the end of it and that's what I want to see in these. It's a concept that makes a character have to grow as a character, and I love it. And the ending is brilliant. I've complimented the twist ending on I think three of these films, and all of them are because they're subtly set up uh, throughout the films. This one isn't set up at all. It comes out of nowhere and smacks you in the face. It's absurdist, and it's a brilliant just kind of joke at the expense of twist endings as a concept and it's so funny to me <laughs> hello hey Alyssa. um weird question you haven't perchance seen my black button-up shirt have you seth why would i know i live in california like 700 miles away not a clue. This is my other pick for best film. They're back to back with each other in the playlist, so that's fun. I will say though that if you're a creator of any of the other films and you feel like, like I'm probably biased because I'm saying that the film made by the popular kids who happen to also be my friends is one of my picks for best film, you're absolutely right. I'm very biased about this. I love Jack Wright. He is a pure foxy boy. 
and I love him. <laughs> but you're only half right, because even when I try to look at this objectively, honestly, all of these performances are some of, if not the best performances in this film, easy. But enough about that, let's uh, get into the meat of this film. This easily is the largest cast out of any of the films in the contest, but each individual character is characterized so well that you understand each individual character as an individual in just five minutes. Each character is wearing a different color and the style of their clothing matches their character, uh, which is a small thing, but it subtly reinforces in your mind like which character has which quirks. And that's so smart. I love it. It doesn't just end with the characters themselves. There's tiny details just hidden on the set. Some of it's like foreshadowing stuff. Some of it's just kind of jokes that don't have anything to do with anything. And none of the characters point out these jokes. They're just there for the audience's enjoyment. I've rewatched this film more than any of the other films made for this contest. And I learn something new every time. This film does have flaws. I think uh, because I've rewatched it so much, a lot of the holes in the plot have started to stand out to me. Uh, but really, honestly, I can't explain those plot holes without spoiling the whole film. So you just go watch it yourself. Mustard. He's a pumpkin. You can't prove anything. The script of fate. If you had the chance to change your fate, would you? This is a really fun concept. It's not necessarily an original concept. I mean, the ending is basically identical to Who Killed Tom. It's just here it's played straight instead of for laughs. I want to say that what makes this film great isn't so much the concept, but how it's used. But really how the story's told is my least favorite thing about it. See, they stuck to this POV shot which not only makes the cinematography very shaky, but it also means that you can't see the one actor in this film's face at all at any time. So you never know how she's reacting to the weird stuff going on around her. You only know like what she's doing. You never know her emotional state. You never know why she's doing any of the things she's doing. You just see it through her eyes. I will say that the pacing and the editing of this film are both great. Awards! I genuinely loved all 14 of these. I just love some of them more than others because it's my subjective opinion, okay? Best story. Third place went to Script of Fate. Like I said, one of my favorite concepts. Second place went to Not A Clue. Like I said, some of my favorite characters. First place is Cody, which I know I didn't vote for, but I'm kind of of two minds on whether or not I'd like that it won first place for best story. Like, this is a really emotional story. But it's very personal and very honest, too, which means it was based on reality, whereas everything else had to be imaginative and original. It has actual emotional weight, which a lot of the stories don't have. So it makes sense as a winner of best story. But does a personal and honest story automatically trump a story that's engineered to have really good characters and really good concepts that were original? Are we saying that reality is necessarily better than fiction? Because as a writer, the fact that I'm considering that possibility is terrifying. Moving on. Best editing. I mentioned earlier that I really think Script of Fate and My Husband is Missing had really great pacing and really great editing. I don't care what third place is, those two deserve awards in this category. The Missing Husband took third place, so I got one of the two that I thought in third place. Mysterious Shirt got second, and considering this is one of my favorite out of all the films, and it's kind of based around an editing trick, the fact that I didn't even think to mention this one is kind of weird. Sleepless got first, and you know what? Sleepless had great editing. I can't complain. Best Cinematography. If I'm being honest, Best Cinematography should probably go to 
uh, Sleepless, My Husband is Missing, and Kogi. Very close fourth place with another space in time. Blue is a good color. Anyways, we don't get to see what fourth place was, but the top three were the top three I said. So, good job, everybody. Uh, let's take a deep breath and enjoy the fact that what I thought was best actually won all three. <sighs> best actress. I loved a lot of the actresses' performances in these films. Most of them, in fact. Except for Joy, who plays the girl in Mysterious Scripts. Uh, because you never see her face, you never really see her act. Uh, so it's weird to me that she was in the top three actresses. Anna and Sarah won second and first place, so uh, those were two I specifically said should have won anyway. So I'm happy there. Congratulations, my ladies. Moving on to Best Actor. Best Actor was even harder for me to narrow down choices to pick, mostly because the two actors that I thought did the best job weren't nominated for Best Actor. Jack would have been my first pick and he wasn't nominated. My second choice would have been Tucker Harvey, who played the host in Another Space and Time. Emmett Harvey, who played the intern, was another good choice, so I just voted for him instead. He unfortunately didn't get in the top three, and I'm not sure why, he was snubbed. Third place went to Jaden for his work in Sleepless, and honestly, his voiceover is one of the best things about it. So yeah, he easily deserves that. Second place, meanwhile, went to Sparrow. The, the dog. But you realize that the dog can't act. The dog doesn't have a concept of acting. The dog just makes whatever face he feels like making. And in the rare shot where he makes a face that looks like it's the correct emotion, which again, is rare in the film, it was an accident. The dog isn't capable of acting. How does he have second place? Best film. Now I've already told you guys what my personal picks for best film are. Uh, they would be Mysterious Shirt and Not a Clue, probably tied uh, for first, and then a nice close third is My Husband is Missing with Another Space and Time as a very close fourth, but obviously we only know the top three, so what I say should be the top fourth doesn't really matter. Third place went to My Husband is Missing. All good so far. Second place went to Not a Clue. All good so far. First place went to Cody. I've criticized this film a lot, especially in this last awards section, and I don't want to beat it over the head too hard because as I said when I initially talked about it, I don't think this film can be any better than it was, so my criticisms for it aren't constructive. I can't say that this doesn't deserve best film. It has an emotional core that most of these films just don't have. But like I said at the beginning, that's not what I'm looking for in these. I want to see good characters and interesting concepts. I want the concept of the mystery to be original and interesting and for that to impact the characters in a way that forces them to make interesting decisions that make them learn and grow as characters. This film doesn't do that. At the very least, I would argue that it doesn't do that as well as a lot of the other films in here. And yet, it captures grief and sadness and joy and life and human emotion a nice neat little package that's able to actually resonate with the audience. I asked earlier if reality is more important than fiction, 
Perhaps it's not that either outweighs the other, just that each must have a little bit of the other inside it. The fiction must contain a piece of reality, a human element, which in this case is ironically delivered to us by a dog. I just can't believe Adler would actually sue us. I mean, he and I are in a cult together. You're in a cult? I mean, yeah, but it's just like a bunch of homeschooled YouTubers who all listen to this podcast together. Wait, you mean the inner circle? Joe, that is a really serious cult. They do like human sacrifices somewhat regularly. <laughs> no, they don't. Yes, they do. I know. I watched the geek wave. I've been a member for like a year now, and I've never sacrificed a single person. Well, Joe, maybe that's why one of the more prominent members of the cult is out to get you now. Don't be silly, HN. That's not how cults work. Have you ever been in a cult? I didn't think so. I was in a cult, and it was exactly like that. Sure you have. Who'd want you in a cult? You'd probably ruin things like, Oh guys, I don't think we should do human sacrifices. Come on, nobody wants that at their party. 